Good morning, everyone. I'm Oren Otter, pastor of the Christian Furry Fellowship. In case you haven't heard of it, the CFF is an online body of believers whose purpose is to reach out into the furry community, to bring in Christians there for mutual support, and of course to carry the gospel out into the furry community. I'm going to be posting a series of sermons to YouTube in an effort to meet that goal. And the first one I'm going to be preaching for you today is the very first one that I ever preached to the Christian Furry Fellowship back in August of 2005. And it's called, Why Attend Church? Why do we need to attend church? I'd like to start this off with a little story. Once upon a time in the Amazon River Basin, there was a fam family of Amazonian giant otters. And this family were three brothers who had just come of age. Their names were Wansi, Kukushe, and Tiwahe. It was time for them to leave their home and make their way in the world. Because there were few suitable homes in the area, they would each have to search far and wide for a new place of their own. The first brother, Wansi, found an enormous lake high in the Andes. There were many frogs, crustaceans, and fish, enough to feed his entire village back home for many years. But without anyone to share this vast harvest, he became lonely. As the months went by, Wansi wasted away despite the abundance of food, for his sorrow consumed him. The second brother, Kukushe, went south and moved in with several bachelor Lobita otters. These Lobita were fun companions. They played exciting and dangerous games like swatting at the tails of cows and then jumping out of the way before the cows could kick them. During the night they would sneak into hen houses and steal eggs, a tasty delight for any otter. The more he hung around the Lobitas, the more reckless Kukushe became until finally his luck ran out. He was caught in a net by a chicken farmer, who sold him to a furrier. The third brother, Tiwahe, searched far and wide, but no suitable home was found for him. So he said to himself, I will return to my home village. My mother and father will take me in again, and I will go out and look for a home again next year. So Tiwahe returned to the village and to the home of his parents. As the year passed, Tiwahe kept company with the tribe's elders and warriors. He became strong and wise by following their examples. The next year, when he set out again, he was able to travel further because of his strength and learning. During his travels, Tiwahe met the Lobitas, who had been Kukushe's roommates. After learning what had happened, he went to the furrier's farm where Kukushe was being kept in a tiny cage. With the skills he had learned over the past year, he was able to release his brother from the cage. Together, the brothers traveled north. In the mountains, Tiwahe's sharp senses caught the scent of Wansi. When he found him, Wansi was so weak that he could barely stand. Using his own strength, Tiwahe carried him back to the village in the Amazon. There, Kukushe became strong again, and Wansi became wise, and both were much happier in the presence of their kin. At first, this may seem like just a happy little folk tale, but it illustrates some very important principles. In the case of Wansi, whose name means one, the point illustrated is that people need friends. Even those among us with the characteristics of solitary animals aren't designed for complete solitude. In Genesis 2.18, God himself proclaims that it isn't good for man to be alone. Now, in a strictly technical sense, Adam was never alone. He had the company of every sort of animal, and he also had the fellowship of God himself. Yet, it was clearly not enough. There was a need beyond what God himself could fulfill directly. Much as he needed water, food, air, warmth, and gravity, Adam needed the companionship of someone like himself, someone who was at once both a physical animal and a being created in God's image. For us, the need goes two steps further. First, the majority of our own little group are a little different from normal humans. Second, we've been transformed by the grace of God and made new in our spirits. This is something the unsaved cannot possibly understand. So, if we truly need the companionship of people like us, furries are good, Christians are better. Christian furries are the jackpot. And if you find a friend with whom you can identify even more closely than that, wonderful!
You found something precious. Treat them like it. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, King Solomon has this to say about friendship. In 4.9, two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cold is not quickly broken. Together we are stronger than the sum of our parts. Now let's take a look at the account of Kukushé. In case you're wondering, his name means pig. Kukushé took up residence with those who were reckless and foolish, and as a result became reckless and foolish himself. Experience and scripture both tell us that we become like those we hang around with. Proverbs 13.20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. But it goes even further than that. Proverbs 27.17 Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Proverbs 27.9 Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. A company of fools will become even more foolish as they egg each other on to new depths of stupidity. Anyone who has ever watched Jack knows that for a fact. I don't want to use rude language here. A company of wise men encourage each other to greater wisdom. Happy people, when put together, become happier. So what happens when people of like faith assemble together? Obviously, they're going to grow more mature in their faith. So what other reasons are there? Well, there's the fact that God tells us to. Hebrews 10.24 And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Lastly, let's take a look at the very last part of the story. Tiwahe, whose name means family, during his additional year in the village became strong and wise. This extra ability gave him what he needed to accomplish his goals when he went abroad again, these goals being to travel far and to rescue his two brothers. We also have a goal when we're apart, this being to share the gospel with the unsaved. It's the skills we gain in church that enable us to accomplish this with any effectiveness. Well, that's the sermon. That was uh, Why Attend Church from August 6, 2005, by yours truly. And I encourage you once again, if you uh, have any interest at all in coming and finding some fellow Christians in the furry community, please come on down to the Christian Furry Fellowship. You can find us at www.ottercomics.us and then just follow the signs for St. Fred's. Thank you all and have a wonderful day.